still waters into mercy and nothing can keep us apart so we Great is your love. Great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. Thank you, Lord. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Yeah, your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough. Sing that with me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yeah, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. to worship him, don't you? I was thinking about that scripture today. It says, Oh, bless the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. So I was just thinking about no matter what I've gone through in life, that if I've just learned to begin to praise him, I magnify the Lord over here. He becomes so much bigger than my problems that after a while, it doesn't even matter. And so... I just want to encourage you as we just walk through this life together. Remember to all oh, magnify the Lord for he is greatly to be praised. Can you say amen to that?
see his love and mercy washing over all our sin the people sing the people see hosanna 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 in the highest hosanna 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 in the highest i see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith with selfless faith i see a near revival stirring as we pray and see we're on our knees we're on our knees Jose thank you for Hosanna. That means God save us. Thank you that you have done that. Thank you that you are here right now and that you love our singing unto you. We're so grateful, Lord, that you accept our offerings because I know and we all know that our offerings are flawed, but you are a good father and you love your children. And Father, even when we take even a moment to think about it. We can be grateful. And like Daniel said, that when we focus on you and magnify you, that the things around us, the things of this earth, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So we worship you, Lord. We worship you for you are worthy. 
You are worthy of all our praise forever and ever. So I'm going to share with you um, quickly that this is my oldest child right here, and that's my second oldest child over there. <laughs> and and um, it is sweet as a mom to be able to sing these worship songs with my kids. We sing them at home sometimes, and, and we're not a perfect family. Those of you who know us know absolutely we're not a perfect family. We're a blended family, and there's ups and downs, but... But I am here to testify that God is faithful. Amen? Amen. God is faithful, and he is just. And in that justice, however, he is merciful. And he is still mighty, and he is still powerful. And he's, that's the same God that's right here with us right now. And he loves every single person in this building and every person in this county of Merced. The people have done horrible, horrible things. The people that sometimes we look at and go, ew, he loves that person. And that's the, the words of the bridge of Hosanna, touch my heart a lot, where it says, heal my heart and make it clean. And then it says, let my eyes see the way you see all of this and help me love, break my heart for what breaks yours. Because it's so easy to stand in a place and think that I'm a little bit better than someone else when I know full well that is not true. It's easy because we're flesh and blood when we do that. Um, by January, she'll be in South America. He might be in Afghanistan with the Air Force. And my mom might be in Costa Rica and my sister might be in Spain. <laughs> I'm serious. My family's going to be all over the world. Thankfully, I still have four more kids at home. But, um, but it's, I know that my God that I worship here with all of my brothers and sisters right now, he's going to be with my family wherever they are. Amen. God is good. Right now, we want to offer you the prayer partners over there on the side wall. I want to encourage you to go pray with them. That same God is right here waiting to hear from you, no matter what you're going through. He loves you. He wants to hear from you. This is my revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus crucified Salvation through repentance At the cross on which he died Now hear my absolution Forgiveness for my sin Thank you, Lord sink beneath the waters that Christ was buried in. Confess your lordship 
and glorify your name. Your word, it stands eternal. Your kingdom knows no end. Your praise goes on forever and on and on again. No power can stand against you. No curse, assault, or throne. No one can steal your glory, for it is yours alone. I stand to sing your praises. I stand to testify that I was dead in my sin. But I will rise. I will rise. As Christ was raised to life, now in your name your word it stands eternal your kingdom knows no end your praise goes on forever and on and on again no power can stand against you no curse or salt or throne no one can steal your glory It's a promise. Amen. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relayed how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. 
chains of gold I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me thank God he has and like a flood his mercy Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing. Everybody says amen. All right, guys. Just take a few minutes and greet one another. Enjoy the rest of the service. That was good. Thank you, uh, Posey crew. Thank you very much. And company. That's good. I like that. Uh, would you sing with me? My chains are gone. I've been set free. My Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, your mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace. Just give the Lord an applause. Lord, thank you. Oh, we love you, Lord. You are amazing. Your grace is amazing. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Isn't that sweet? That is a sweet truth, huh? Man. Well, hey, if you uh, 
don't have the uh, mentoring uh, statement down, I am a mentor, then we're going to work on that tonight a little bit, and uh, we're so glad that you're here to do that with us. So take out your, uh, your notes, uh, although before I start preaching, we're going to have the offering ushers go ahead and come on forward, and uh, we just want to ask God to bless our offering. Church, it's time to take the offering. Yeah? Nice. Nice. Very good. Oh, Mary, you can take a card out of there and start that going around. Um, so, you know, whenever we uh, give of our tithes and offerings, it's a great way to say to the Lord, Lord, uh, you own it all. Did you know that God owns it all? It all belongs to Him. You're saying, wait a second, what about all the stuff I got? <laughs> well, you only got that because He gave it to you, right? He allowed you to have it. It all comes back to Him and, and ultimately from Him. And so part of what God, in fact, the whole Christian life, what God is asking us to do is to reorient ourselves to letting Him be in charge. Hmm, that's the deal. Yeah. And the reason why it's so painful is because you and I, we want to be in charge. Did you know that? Did you know that you've got a propensity to kind of want to be in charge of your own life and do it your, own, do it your way? Uh, and so the whole Christian experience is us learning to, to trust God and reorient and submit to Him and let Him work in us. And so um, I don't know what you're trying to be in charge of right now. I don't know what you're, trying, you're holding on to, but I would guess there are probably uh, some of you, indeed probably most of you, have some little aspect of your world, your life, that you're holding on to tightly that does not coincide or agree with God's desires for you. Am I talking to anybody here in the congregation? <laughs> anybody just not want to admit it? <laughs> and so what, what the Lord wants us to do, and our money is just one of those things. It really is. I mean, the sooner you start surrendering your stuff to God, money, people, circumstances the sooner you stop fighting, striving, wrestling with God's purposes. Ultimately, that's where God wants you, and I want to invite you to learn to pursue. And one way we do that is by taking our stuff, our finance, and saying, God, I want to give back to you. Because if I can't trust you with my money, how can I trust you with my heart? Right? If I can't trust you with my stuff, how can I trust you with my life? And so, Heavenly Father, we just want to learn. We want to learn to give up and give to you. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. Lord, we want to learn to give up and give to you. Teach me, Jesus. Even tonight, Lord, how to trust you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive the offering. And we've got a few more messages on the shout. Fall has arrived. Halloween is over. Bring on the Christmas! Hey! Welcome to my kitchen. There it is. In past years, the Christmas holiday season may have been a great time of anticipation and excitement for you. But this year, the prospect of facing the holidays without your loved one may cause anxiety and dread. You're not alone. Grief Share, surviving the holidays, is here to help you to connect to support, and encouragement as well as advice to survive the holidays. Join us on Sunday, November 24th at 8.45 a.m. in the Tanaya House or contact PA at extension 27 for more information on Grief Share. Hey, Donnie Moore and Radical Reality are returning to share their life-changing message of hope in their own radical way by breaking bricks, bending steel bars, and ripping phone books. Bring your kids to hear the uplifting testimonies. You don't want to miss this. Donnie and Radical Reality be here on Wednesday, November 20th at 7 p.m. right here in Half Dome. You know, $7 doesn't seem like much nowadays. For $7, I could get two hamburgers. Ah, or I could get two triple venti sugar-free non-fat no-foam extra caramel macchiatos. Ah, hot, 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 hot. Or I could get two gallons of gas, but that wouldn't get me very far. But I never thought that $7 could connect me to someone on the other side of the world. When I put $7 in a shoebox gift, it helps to send that gift to a child in need. So, for a shoebox going to Mongolia, that's about a thousand miles per dollar. Try getting that kind of mileage out of your hybrid. If I tried to send a shoebox to Mongolia myself, I would spend more than $350, plus the cost of renting a local yak to carry the box up to a village. And what child is going to accept a shoebox from a strange yak? 
But that shoebox gift could bring the message of the gospel to a child who has never heard of Jesus before. So this year, after you fill your shoebox with toys, don't forget to put $7 in your box to make sure that it gets to that child in need. This year, get involved with Operation Christmas Child. Presents! Presents! OCC is celebrating 20 years. You can bring a child to Christ. Bring your shoebox gift to the kiosk in the lobby or to the church office now through November 17th. Presents! 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 Ah. Say hi to my say hi to my Bobby. Say hi to say hi to my buddy Bobby. That's hard to say, buddy Bobby. Buddy Bobby. Buddy Bobby. He's got a message for you. Buddy Bobby. Buddy Bobby. Buddy Bobby. Hi, I'm Bobby Chapman, your safety director here at Yosemite Church. The safety team, in conjunction with Child Care and Kids Club, will be conducting a fire drill on November 23rd and 24th during the last 20 minutes of service. The safety of your children are very important to us. Please discuss this fire, fire drill with your children. For more information, please contact Bobby Chapman at Extension 25. Thanks, YC. Have a great service. Awesome crew, huh? Isn't he creative? That Matt boy. And didn't Angel do a great job last week? Yay! Angel, you're an angel. Um, well, we're so, I'm so glad that you're, you're here tonight because we want to uh, embark upon another part of our vision that uh, it may have looked like we even skipped over for a little bit because we were talking about being a missionary and we skipped over one of the statements. Do you remember what that was? What would that be? I am a mentor, right? Exactly. And so, we're going to go back and spend some time kind of unpacking what it looks like to be mentors. And uh, so I'm hoping that, that tonight's going to open your eyes to some new uh, aspects about mentoring. And over the next several weeks, we're going to kind of dig into that and find out more about how we all can impact the life of another person significantly. You were, in fact, I'm going to propose that you were made to be a mentor. You were made to mentor. And you, a lot of different things you can do, but God wants you to be someone who mentors others for him. So let's say our vision statement, can we? Just kind of keep on working that in our head. How many think if you didn't have it on the screen, you could say it? Awesome. Come on. Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah. Go be, be proud. Lift your hands real high. You think you can say it? Yep. Awesome. A lot of you. Beautiful. Okay. They took it away. So, so let's see. Okay. So we are a loving community. Nice. That was very good. That was pretty robust, wasn't it? That was pretty robust. Yeah. We are a loving community of growing disciples. We've been talking about being loving. Being loving is critical. And that's not going away. We are going to keep driving that and pushing for that because I don't know about you, but is it so easy to get distracted from being loving? Yeah? How many know this to be true? How many know it really to be true? Both hands. Yeah. And so, so we're, we're not going away from this. This is, we're driving this puppy home. Uh, then the next thing is to be, a, to be a disciple, someone who's learning how to be disciplined in our walk with God. Is this also a very big challenge hmm? for some of us more than others? Huh? Yeah. And then we want to be mentors and being a mentor is really just being a discipler. Okay. We use that word mentor. It's kind of a current word, but really it's, it fits right into the whole idea what the Bible talks about in terms of disciples. The New Testament is written by disciples, about disciples, for disciples. And if we're going to obey God, that means we're going to have to disciple. Okay? We're going to be part of that plan. In fact, that really is the message and the meat of our whole thing we've been talking about in terms of being a missionary, which is the Great Commission. And you know the Great Commission from Matthew 28, 19 and 20? Right? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You're, you're, just, you're all over that, Freddie. Um, and that is what God wants us to do. And so that whole, that whole great commission is really, it's, that's both being a missionary, but notice he didn't say go and make converts, right? He didn't say go and make converts, did he? Now, because a convert is someone who's made a decision to follow Jesus, right? A converted. And so it's important. It's important to make a decision, but because I, I can't be a disciple without making a decision, okay? So I want you to be making decisions about being a discipler, a disciple and a discipler. And so that means we're going to say, you know, how, how can I 
um, strategically, how can I effectively pour into the lives of others to accomplish that job that God gave me to do? So we want to unpack several things in our, in, our, um, in our notes. And the verse that goes along with I'm a mentor and the little cards that you've been passed around. Uh, did you get those? Did you get one? Okay, let's read what it says about what we're saying about mentors, okay? This is kind of the, this is the, the we believe that when this is happening in your life, that you're going you're gonna to be fulfilling part of God's God-ordained job description for you. And, and ultimately, that's what our vision is. What I believe it is, is, is God's job description for us. Because if you got, if you got hired for, for somebody, you know, you got hired for a job, but they didn't tell you what you're supposed to do, would that be frustrating? That'd be really frustrating, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, here's a job. We're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're on our team. You know, you're going to get a paycheck and, and go to work. You're like, what do I do? I mean, that would really be frustrating. And a lot of you, literally as Christians, you don't know what God wants you to do. That's going to be frustrating. You're going to be frustrated in your spiritual experience if you, if you don't know from day to day, God, what do you want me to do? Our vision statement clarifies what God wants you to do. There's not a day, there's not a day, Yuri, that God does not want you to be loving. That's part of your job, okay? There's not a day that God does not want you to be a disciple, there's not a day that God does not want you to be a mentor. It's part of our job. Every single day, God wants us to fulfill those four things. To be loving, to be a disciple, to be a mentor, to be a missionary. How are you doing with your job? Wow. I mean, that got quiet real fast, huh? That's my job? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant, He's going to be asking you about those things. And so because the Bible's a big book and it's, a, it's pretty confusing sometimes, part of the reason why our vision was created is because we want to net it out. We want to net it out so every one of us can say, you know what, it's, uh, the ambiguity is away. I, I don't have any confusion anymore about what God wants me to do. He, he wants me to, to do these four things and fulfill them with passion for Him. And so our statement about being a mentor is this. Um, Let's look at, do you have the I am a mentor statement up there? You don't. Okay, but you got it in your card, don't you? It says, I will, I will do what? I will seek to be an example that anyone can follow, an, intent, an observational mentor to all of the youth in my sphere of influence, and an intentional mentor to a few. I will memorize and meditate on Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9, and Philippians 4, 9, to help me stay focused on this goal. Is that what your little card says? Yeah, awesome. It's awesome. Isn't that nice? We're on the same page. Yeah. So that little card kind of defines what a mentor looks like. That's kind of what it, it tells us. We can know, oh, oh, that's what that's what a mentor is. It does this. It's an example. It does this uh, this uh, observational thing. It does this intentional thing. We're not even going to get to that today. We're going to talk about just some of the fundamental things about why you and I need to recalibrate our lives to make this one of our major goals of our life. So, the first, you know, the, probably the, the earliest statement I think that just resonates mentoring is, is in Deuteronomy. Which, did you know that Jesus quoted the Bible a lot? You know, Jesus had a lot of scripture memorized. Did you know that? He quoted, and out of all the books of the Old Testament, out of all the Old Testament writings, the book he quoted the most out of was the book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy is not a parenting book. Now, it has stuff that affects parents, but it's not a book written to parents. It's just a book written to the children of Israel, just to the whole community of Israelites that came out of bondage from Egypt. Uh, it was the group that went through the whole um, desert time when so many of them died. In fact, an entire generation died. And these are the ones that made it out of that desert experience. And Moses gives them this command from God in chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. Read it with me. Ready, set, go. These commandments that I give you today are to upon your hearts. Impress them on your children Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and upon your gates. Love that passage. So you have on your card, you've got uh, the little I am a mentor, right? On the back side of that, you should have that verse, right? I just think this is a phenomenal verse. It's a great verse to have memorized because... Uh, this, he said, is a, is a part of a what? It's part of the com commandments. These commandments that I give you 
today are to be upon your hearts. That's God saying, I want you to have it inside of you. I want you to own it. I want it to be so wired into who you are that you transmit that to your children when you do what? I love this. When you do what? You walk along the road. When you lie down. And when you get up. <laughs> right? Right? That's like, he's kind of saying, Brian, that basically I want you to do this all the time. Right? This is Brian Jr. Watch him. <laughs> because God wants us to do it all the time. You know, when we're, every part of our life, it just to flow out of us. Because you know what? Values are caught, not taught. I mean, you can teach values, but values are caught more than they're taught. We can't expect our children to listen to our advice and ignore our example. We can't. But a lot of us do, right? We well, do what I say, not what I do, right? Yeah, I told you not to do that, but Dad, you do that, right? And so we can't, we've got to stop expecting our kids to listen to our advice and ignore our example because what has to happen is we've got to do, we've got to understand what is it? What is it? What is this? What it is? First point in your notes, what it is. I know it's not good English. What it is. Mentoring, I, so we've got to, what it is. I, I think we just got to figure out what this thing is so at least we can have an idea. What am I shooting for? So here's a little definition of mentoring. Mentoring is a journey of one life being poured into another. Okay? While you're walking and lying down and getting up and all that stuff. One life being poured into another where a trusted counselor, guide, tutor, teacher, or coach comes alongside and models, teaches, and trains how to become more like Christ. Like Christ. Now you could have, this is our context, right? So we're, we're saying this would be a definition for us as, as believers, you could put anything in those last two blanks. If you were a teacher, it would be maybe that comes alongside and helps someone become more equipped as a teacher. Um, you could, a, a, a dentist, probably one of the best ways to learn to be a dentist is to have a great dentist that you watch and, and someone who sticks their fingers in your mouth and, and then you stick your fingers in their mouth and then you figure out how to do dentistry, you know, by, by doing it. By, if they model it, they teach it, and they train it. It's in their walking, it's in their sleeping, it's in their rising, it's just who they are. And so in, in any way, shape, or form, anything that you want to learn, you want to transmit and give away to the next person, mentoring is a great way to do it. It's, um, it's the Jesus model. It's what Jesus did. Um, but, I, but I want to just point out the, the motivation the Bible tells us for mentoring. The motivation. You'll notice in John chapter 14, uh, this is a, a chapter, it's, 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 um, it's called the Upper Room Discourse. It's John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. It's called the Upper Room Discourse. It's where Jesus communicates kind of his last will and testament. It's where he kind of communicates everything that are, are most important things that he wanted his disciples to dial into before he left planet Earth, before he died on a cross, rose from the dead, and ascends into heaven. And so in John 14, three times Jesus says something very, very similar. In verse 15 he says, If you love me, what will you do? You will obey what, what, what I suggest. Right? So he says, if you'll obey, if you love me, you will obey. What, whoever has, verse 21, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he points, to, what's unique about this person? He is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Now that's kind of good news, isn't it? God will reveal himself to those that love him. You want to know God more? He's, he wants to show himself to those who love him. Verse 23, Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will do what? Obey my teaching. Right? Is that what he says? If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make ourselves known to him. And so if I want to know God, the best way to do that is to love God, and it's pretty clear that there's a very critical thing that illustrates whether or not my love is true. What is it? What is it? Obedience. Yeah, I think it's pretty, he's pretty solid on that point, isn't he? If you love me, you'll do what? You'll obey. Yeah, whoever has my commands and 
obeys them. He is the one who loves me. It's pretty solid on that. You know, most of us, there's a problem. We think of love as kind of a switch. We turn on, you know, because when we get turned on, we think we're in love, right? We kind of think love is like a switch, right? Yeah, turn it on. You're in love. Turn it off. I'm not in love. <laughs> Love's not, that's not really what love is. Love is not like a switch. Love is like a muscle. Love is like a muscle. And if you don't exercise that muscle to love well, you're not going to love well. Your love is going to be weak. It's going to be anemic. It's going to be malnourished. But when you exercise that love well, when you take care of love and you strengthen love, all of a sudden love is strong and nothing can turn it off. He's talking about his disciples' ability to grow in the depth of their love so their love is always on for him. Always on for him. That's the motivation of mentoring. The motivation for us to mentor anyone would be that we want to we want to love them. We want to give to them what God has given to us. We want to transfer it from me to you. And if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, it's not a matter of you and I becoming people that talk to the masses, but we learn to talk to maybe just one, at least just one at a time in such a way that we begin to communicate and draw them to deeper places of faith. Um, so what it is, what it is. Do you get what it is? Yeah, what it is. Um, well, well, what it isn't, real quick. What it isn't is it isn't just attending church, sweetheart. It's being the church. Okay? It, isn't, it isn't just a matter of uh, telling you. It's a matter of showing you. It isn't just a matter of theoretical truth. It's practical truth. It isn't just the talk. It's the walk. It's what it is and is, is those things that kind of look like it, but really you dig deeper and it's not. It's the walk. It's the practical. It's the being God's people that really changes lives around us. Um, so why don't we do it? You ever thought about this? Why don't we do it? Why, don't we, why aren't we out mentoring? So we're not going to ask for a show of hands. I just want you to think about it in your own life. Um, so I'm going to ask the question. Just think about it. Who are you mentoring? Who are you mentoring? I envision the day when I can ask that question and every hand will raise. You got someone. You can name them. And this is who I'm mentoring, Pastor. Wouldn't that be awesome? Cool. I, I think, wow, that would not only that not only do my heart good, that would do your heart good. And God would be so pleased, so honored by that. Why don't we do I, several reasons. Let me give you three reasons real quick. Uh, I don't think we mentor because we don't see it as our responsibility. We don't see it as our responsibility. It's, frankly, it's not my job, Pastor. It's somebody else's job who's got more education or something, something other than what I have. I just, it's not really my responsibility. Um, it's too big of a task to mentor. I mean, that's one of the greatest myths of all. It's too big of a task to mentor. You mean there's no one? You're saying, I don't think I'm even qualified, really. Really? There's no one that you know, you're not a little bit ahead of? I mean, you can't look back and say, oh, yeah, maybe they're, you know. I mean, take someone. You're, you're an old person like me. <laughs> Yay, old people. Yay, over 50s. Over 50 people. Not over 50 numbers. Over How many are over 50? Wow, we have a lot of old people here. Look at that. Woohoo! Awesome. But you feel so young, right? That's good. That's good. Um, you know, we don't, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Um, we don't stop exercising because we grow old. We grow old because we stop exercising. So the more engaged you are in good things, the even no matter how old you are, the better you get. And you've got a lot to give those who are under 50. How many are over 40? Woohoo! How many 40-year-olds? 40s. Come on, 40-year-olds. Come out, be proud. I know you don't want to tell anybody. Yeah. How many 30-year-olds? 30s, 30-somethings. Yeah, look at you. 20-somethings. Wow, look at you guys. You know, there's a, there's a decade behind you. Did you know that? 
There's a decade that are trying to catch up. <laughs> and they're not doing a very good job. <laughs> you got to help them. There's someone that you're a little bit ahead of them in some area, right? And so you can't... I, I love what Mother Teresa says. She says, I never, uh, I never see the masses as my responsibility. I always look at the individual. I can only love one person at a time. Just one one, one. So you begin. I begin. If I never, if I never picked up one person, I wouldn't have picked up 42,000. The same thing goes for you. The same thing for your family. The same thing for your church, your community. Just begin with how many? One. One. We don't do it because we don't think it's our job. It's our job. It's our job. They're around us. I don't know why we're not seeing them. They're there. I hope and pray. In fact, let's just, let's just pause for a moment. Let's just pause. And let's just ask God, Lord, impress upon, Lord, impress upon me. Who might you want me to mentor? Can you ask him that with me? Just whisper that with me. Heavenly Father, who might you want me to mentor? The second reason why I don't, I don't think we mentor is because we haven't experienced it. We've not experienced it. Um, I mean, you know, I, I just don't know how. I had, um, I was having, you know, as, because everything that I, everything that I seek to, to do, and by the way, if, I, if, I, if I'm telling you that you should do it, sweetheart, I'm telling myself, I better be doing it. If I want you to mentor, I better be bleeding mentoring. I better have names and faces, names and numbers I can point to that I'm pouring my life into. If I'm going to ask you to do it, you better believe I better be stepping up and doing it myself. And I'm not going to ask you to do it if I'm not doing it. And I got to tell you, it is, it is awesome. But, I, but the reason why I didn't do it for the longest time is because I never really had it done to me. I mean, my mentors were people like, you know, people I kind of admired, um, but they didn't like officially mentor me, right? Um, and so I followed some people, and, and that's kind of the best I got. I, you know, I kind of picked some people out as good role models, and I tried to watch them and do what they did, but I didn't have anybody that really did a very intentional mentoring of me, so I wasn't real sure how to do it. And so... Um, I had to kind of just start figuring out. I just had to start launching in. I had to start reading books. I had to start uh, asking people if they wanted me to mentor them. And wow, they, they did. And, and then I had others ask me if I would mentor them. And I wasn't sure I wanted to, <laughs> but I did anyhow. And, and, and some went well and some didn't go so well. And so I thought I started doing it. But I think a lot of us, we just haven't experienced it. And so we say, you know, I don't, I don't really know how, pa Pastor. And it's funny. Adults are always asking kids what you want to be when you grow up. It's because they're looking for ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I'll switch. <laughs> I, I think we are. I don't think we feel very equipped. Uh, you know, to who, where was our, our models weren't that good and, and they didn't really intentionally, you know, tutor us or help us discover how to communicate, how to work through conflict. I, one of the things I love doing with, with the young men that I mentor is to, is to process how to deal with conflict. And so um, uh, I've got, I've got, uh, a dozen young men, um, anywhere from 20 um, to 40, right? Because it's a decade behind me, right? Um, and I love to talk to them about conflict because I don't know about you. I, I think most of us have a little bit of that going on in our life. How many got some conflict going on in your life? Good. The rest of you just, you're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Everything's fine here, Pastor. No conflict. No worries. And then you're going to wake up, okay? Uh, yeah, we do, but who showed us? Who told us how to handle conflict well? Who's taught us how to express things in a way that isn't attacking, that isn't that doesn't push others' buttons? Who's who's told us and walked us how to do it? So I just love doing that with with the guys that I I hang out with. Awesome. I love coaching them through actual conflict scenarios you got this conflict coming up. Let's talk about how you're going to deal with that. I love that. It's awesome. 
But most of us didn't have that. And so we just say, you know, Ezra, I, I don't know, I've never experienced it. Well, it's time for us to start figuring out how you can experience a little bit of that. Amen? Amen? And you know, the best way, the best way to start knowing what it looks like is to start doing it. It's my little quote by Aristotle. Uh, for the things you have to learn before you can do them, you learn by doing them. For the things you have to learn before you can do them, you learn by doing them. You don't learn baseball by watching baseball. You learn baseball by playing baseball. Okay? You, don't, you don't learn how to do healthy conflict until you start learning to do conflict different than you've been doing or you've seen been done. And someone's coaching you along the way, then you step into it and you try it and it didn't work out so well. So, you, you know... Um, one, of the, one of the biggest blessings I have right now that I'm doing, I'm working with a little young couple. And I tell all my young couples this that I marry. All the couples that I marry, I say, you know what? Man, this is awesome that you want to get married, but you know what? I know you love one another right now and you're excited, but pretty soon you're going to really despise one another. I mean, your, 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 your attractions, your, 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 your differences, you know, attract you. The opposites attract. And after marriage, they attack. And, and that's what's going to happen to you. And so I just want to tell you this because when that happens, you can just go la di da on your own way and end up like 50% of all marriages in divorce, or you can come back and I'll help you. Because kind of premarital counseling is just, you know, la 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 la. What he say? You know, I don't know what he said, you know. La 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 la. We're getting married. <laughs> what the pastor say? Look, la 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 la. Yeah, I don't know. But we're getting married. Yeah, they're so excited, you know. So I just say, listen, if you hear, if you hear me say anything, you know, I know that there's a lot of la, 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 but if you hear me say anything, you're going to get into some tough spots. And you don't have to go it alone. You can come back. A couple I married last spring called me early this summer and said, um, hey, you know that thing you said? said like what thing? La, 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 la. And when we need help, we could call you and get it. I said, I do remember saying that. They said, can we come help you? I'm like, I was like crazy, crazy busy. I said, you know, I got about a month more of some crazy stuff I'm doing, and then let's get together. And so fortunately, they made it that month. <laughs> and that next, that next week we started, we've been meeting almost every week. And they're working on their relationship, and they're making it better. And every week they come back with a little more improvement on their skills because they need someone. So do you. So do you. There's not a one of us that doesn't need someone a little further along than we are. But we don't do it because we've not experienced it. We don't do it also because I ain't got the time, Pastor. I'm just really busy. Thank you very much. You know? Yeah. The third reason why we don't do it is because we ain't got the time. Right? We're too busy. I got so much going on. Do you know the I am loving statement that we're learning here at the church? I don't know if you got that. You should have that already down, by the way. I, I definitely will accept you if you don't. Um, and I'll love you if you don't. And I'll forgive you if you don't. But you should. Um, the I am loving statement is a great statement. Who's got it? Is, anybody got it? Anybody have it? I know, this, I know some people have it. Anybody have it? Okay, Arvin. Stand up. Stand up. This is my friend Arvin. I am loving. What is this? What is it? I am loving. I will eliminate whatever distractions in my life and uh, schedules that interfere with me loving and lo living like Jesus. I will memorize and meditate 1 Corinthians 13 to stay focused on this call. Nice. 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 I will work to eliminate whatever distractions are in my life and schedule that interfere with me living and loving like Jesus. Are you busy? Are you too busy? If you don't have the time to help a young person find the right way in life, somebody with more time will help them find the wrong way. If you don't have the time to help a young person find the right way in life, someone with more time will help them find the wrong way. It's our job. Every one of us. It's our responsibility to start recognizing if I don't have the time, it's time to make the time. If I don't have the time, it's time to start saying, you know what, I'm done with excuses about why I can't do it. I want to start talking about why I should do it. Okay, that's the next point. Excellent. Good point. Glad you brought that up. Let me give you three great reasons and, uh, and we're going to go out and, and maybe 
practice a little bit this week. Hmm? Three great reasons why we should, why we should. The need, number one, the need is great. The need, oh man, the need is so, I mean, the need is so huge. We need desperately to, to recognize that there's tons of kids that need mentors. They need mentors. If you got kids, anybody got kids? Uh, kids of a st- 